recording is going, go ahead and approve it. Yep. And then do me a favor, uh, say and spell your first and last name for me. Anton Green, A-N-T-O-N-G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. And um, what year are you at U of M? I'm a freshman. And what I are you study, studying? I study political science and uh, uh, jazz saxophone. I'm oh, cool. Cool, cool. Well, you know, it um, must be kind of a blast from the past right now to see your movie back in theaters. Um, when you heard the news that, you know, places all over the country were doing this, uh, what were your first thoughts? I was excited. Um, it is, you know, part of my past that I wasn't expecting to get dug up all of a sudden, but I am incredibly happy to be able to do something that helps Ukraine in a substantial way. Sitting here in the U.S., you know, in safety without really being able to do much except for maybe donate or spread awareness, which I do, but it still feels like it's not enough. So being able to help out in such a way that really nobody else can is, uh, you know, it, it's just incredibly, I guess, exciting, happy. It's, you know. I, um, I was doing just some Googling online and I found an MLive article from 2014 um, and it was from the screening day. So that was when you were back in, in middle school. Tell me about, you know, when you were in this movie and what that all was like, um, you know, probably 10 years ago or so. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. You know, I got sent over there just as a nine-year-old flying by myself. Um, I've been there before, but this was a totally new experience. I mean, all of these cameras, all, all this equipment, you know, all this, all these costumes and everything. But I think the most amazing thing about it was that the vision that the director had for my character, for Peter, was just me. It was, I didn't really have to act. I didn't have to worry about putting on some sort of facade or anything. I was just being myself. And so I was really able to experience the thirties as much as you really can. Um, and it was, you know, I didn't really worry about all the cameras or anything. I was just focused in on what was going on around me. You mentioned you'd been there before. Tell me um, your experience about being there and, you know, are you, is your family from there? And did you mm -hmm. grow up in the Ann Arbor area? It seemed like maybe you were going to middle school there from that yeah. article I read. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in Ann Arbor, but my my entire the entire side of my mom's family is from Ukraine, and so we would go there every summer uh, before the pandemic. Um, and I was in a Ukrainian scouts, so I would go to camps there as well. So I had many friends there. Um, so yeah, I have I have a lot of family and, and friends there right now that are unfortunately suffering. Um, thankfully, my grandma was able to. Well, my grandma came here for vacation before this even started, or even had inklings of starting. Um, and sh her flight back was scheduled for a few days after the war broke out. And uh, so she stayed here, of course, with us. And then we were able to get two of my little cousins who uh, live in Lviv, which is one of the most uh, westernmost cities. Uh, they were able to come through Poland and fly all the way here by themselves to safety. What else are you hearing from extended family there? If you don't mind my asking, I'm sure it must be hard to hear, but um, and, and talk about. But feel free to share what's um, what's going on. Well, so most of my family lives in Lviv, and it's relatively safe, as safe as you can get right now in Ukraine. Although, of course, just today I heard a report that there was a, a bombing there, um, but thankfully nothing against civilians. Um, so they are all doing, you know, as well as you can as a Ukrainian right now. Um, I have. I have family who can't leave the country because they're between 18 and 60. And if the war goes on much further, they might have to be conscripted. Um, thankfully, that hasn't happened yet. Um, and then I also have uh, a friend who I was talking to a few days ago, all the way in Eastern Ukraine, right on the border. And he told me that he has to, they get electricity 30 minutes a day from a generator that they have to communicate with anyone. He has to go to the top of his apartment building, which isn't the safest place to be right now. And they have, they're living off of uh, reserves and everything. So it's, it, it's really rough. You know, you kind of alluded to this earlier, but it, it must be hard to be here and, you know, going to school and, and enjoying, you know, all the things that we enjoy on a daily basis. And to think of your family and friends over there, what, you know, is kind of running through your mind these last couple of weeks as things uh, don't really seem to be getting much better. Well, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's because it's always in my mind. 
constantly, 24 seven. I don't have the luxury of not thinking about it. Whenever I have a break, I'm looking at the news, looking on Twitter, seeing if there's any updates. Um, I have been incredibly, um, I've been overjoyed with the Ukrainian response and that, you know, specifically Zelensky and all of all of the Ukrainians who've come together. It's really united Ukraine as a nation that before was slightly divided between the eastern side and the western side. And now it's just, you know, just Ukraine. So I'm I am incredibly overjoyed about that. But uh it it has been hard, especially knowing that I can't really do much. But I've been getting a lot of support from friends, from teachers, family. So when people uh, go see this movie, because, uh, you know, 100% of the proceeds do go to, um, you know, helping people out there, what message do you hope they take away from it? Because I've heard that the themes in that movie are a little similar to what's going on now. Oh, they're, they're incredibly similar. It's practically the same situation. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to go into that a little bit. But so back then, really, it was, it's based in the 30s when uh, when the Soviet Union was you know, genociding the Ukrainian population with a um, with an artificial famine, which killed a pro estimates say between four and ten million Ukrainians for no reason other than the fact that they are Ukrainian. And now, what's happening in Ukraine is the same thing: bombing Russia is bombing apartment buildings, they're bombing hospitals, and Ukraine just doesn't deserve this. The only reason that this is happening is because they are Ukraine, um, and. I'm sorry, what, what was the question again? Just, you know, if people go and see this movie, what do you hope they take right. away from it? Well, I hope they gain gain some sort of sympathy, seeing that this is Ukraine's history. This is what we've been having to fight with for entire generations, not just, you know, the past 20 years. But this is this is really our history, just trying to fight off Russia and trying to survive as a nation, as to, serve, to uh, have our culture thrive, you know. Um, and yeah, I think knowing the history behind it also is incredibly important and seeing the Ukrainian side of the subject, I, whenever, whenever the, this is talked about, especially the Holodomor, which was the, um, artificial famine, um, it's talked about either from the Russian perspective or from a neutral perspective, but it's really important to see the perspective of the victims to see what it was like. I think this movie incredibly, incredibly accurately represents the life of the people back then. And it's just important to see what it was really like from the Ukrainian perspective. Is there anything else you'd like to share about um, the movie being, you know, put out there right now and what you think about that, about, um, you know, your experience being Ukrainian American and your family being over there? Anything else you'd like to share? I, you kind of mentioned this, but I think it's incredibly important to note that all of the proceeds of this are going directly to Ukraine. Everyone in this process is donating, donating their time and their energy and their money to make this happen so that all, all of the ticket money is going directly to Ukraine. Um, and that just makes it so much more important to see this movie. Do you think you'll go with your friends? Maybe they'll get to see as, um, I don't know how old you were, maybe like <laughs> I don't know, um, 10 or 10 or 11. I'm not, I don't know. Uh, nine actually when it was okay. filmed. Yeah. But um, if, if, if it's, if it's shown here in Ann Arbor, I know they're going to force me to go. I've, I've already seen it 18 times from the premieres having to watch it over and over again, but I know a lot of my friends have asked to, to see it. And so I definitely will. I think that's all I need if you're good. All right. Great. Thank you. Great.